It's your girl Caramel representing for GVTV. Some like it, some like it, some like it. You're watching the view. View from G View. GView TV. Entertainment for you. Interviews, previews, and reviews. Welcome back to GView TV. We do have our guest here in studios with us. Goes by the name of Caramel. Good night, Caramel. Good night. How are you doing? How are you? I'm great. Music ambassador, moving music across the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, what's the genre of your, your, your music? My music, I started off with R&B, um, reggae. I do pop. I pretty much write everything. I'm a writer, songwriter also. So I write every music you can think about. Yeah. Yeah. So do you write your own lyrics? I write my own lyrics, yeah. Oh, nice, mm -hmm. very nice. How many how many years now you've been doing this professionally? I actually started writing at the age of eleven when my grandmom passed away. So uh, it was hard. Sad and, song. Um, yes, yeah, so I started off with a song, sad song, and um, I started writing, writing every day, and I recognized, oh, I'm actually maybe a songwriter. <laughs> and I started writing. By the time I started. I think it was like eighth grade, and um, I started modeling, started off with Nabalangi Modeling Agency, and each time I go up, when I started beauty modeling contest, then I started basically sing the songs that I wrote. And would you say Carmel find her sweet spot, or is she still searching? No, I think I find what I really need to do. Yeah, you, you find it. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do? R and B. I do R and B. I do reggae. I write pop. I sing it. Yeah. What inspired you? It's just something that just came across. Like I could get up. I can. I read a lot. Okay. So I can read a book, and I just start writing from what I read. Something can just happen, and I just start writing. Or I just get up, maybe humming in my house, and I just grab my pen, and paper, start writing. So who were some of your biggest influences listening to? My biggest one growing up in Jamaica was Tanya Stevens. Tanya Stevens. Love Tanya Stevens. I like her voice, like the tone. And I just always trying to sing like her. Like I like Tanya. So I guess you have that mood swing then to to be a, a an R and B. Yes. Pop and reggae. Soft reggae or the hard reggae? I would say I'm a soft reggae. I would never put myself as a hard reggae. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't think that would fit my personality. No. It's more like a pretend then. <laughs> <laughs> and which do you find is easiest to write? Which genre? Ah. Uh, or does it depend upon your honest, mood? Be honest, nothing is not hard for me to write. Okay. I could just start writing from nowhere. So do you start your process as you write the song and then you figure out if it should go on an R&B rhythm versus a reggae rhythm versus a no, pop rhythm or how, what I is just, your creative process? I just write as my song, you know, when I went down to Jamaica to start it off recording, I just write and I went and I just say, you know what, I need a custom built rhythm. Yeah. Custom built rhythm. How do you market yourself though? Because you're doing so much genre, how do you market? How do you get in the top into the market of reggae and then top into the market of R and B or pop? So um, right now I kind of started off like an R and B reggae artist, mm -hmm. flowing. So I'm gonna go by that, the R and B reggae. I, I, are you an independent artist or you're signed to? I'm an independent artist currently. And how hard is that? Is it easy? It's not easy working, doing everything. I do have help, definitely, but it's not easy to do a lot of stuff and handling all my calls. It's not easy. Rough. Yes. And, and that you could pass it on to the, the younger generation <laughs> that think that, you know, I want to do music and it just look easy. It's a you lot just, of work. You just go on the stage and you sing and come off and you make a lot of money because they, that, it, you know, people just think that's how it is. No. Yeah? My I, first I'm, day in the studio, I, hours. Hours. Yes. Of work. It, it, a lot of people don't know 
the behind story of music or being an entertainer. They think it's um, the song comes out and it's uh, 3 minutes and 40 seconds and that's what you did. You went in the studio and you did 3 minutes and 40 seconds. That's an easy job and this is the job <laughs> I want to do. <laughs> no. A day is not even a full song because when you complete a song, you think you're true with the song, but you have to go back and kind of listen, you know, make sure you don't miss anything or make sure the, you're right in the rhythm. Everything got to flow. Okay. Um, so did you do any formal training? Have you done any formal training vocally or is it just natural raw talent? I started off, but I only take two vocal lessons. <laughs> okay. two, vocal. two vocal lessons. And you kind of figure out that I sound better than the teacher. No, my <laughs> teacher is great. She's actually um, Paula Griffiths which is PG production she owned and she's Sony, she just signed a contract for Sony Canada as a vocal trainer and she's also a vocal professor at Seneca College. Mm. She's Julie Black, vocal, vocal um, trainer, Keisha Shante, Honey, a couple of them. Mm, big names, yes. you're in good company. Actually, she's my, uh, her nephew is actually my friend's son. Very and nice. that's so, I know her. And you have a banging music video on the outside now, actually getting ro heavy rotation. Yes. Heavy rotation. Yes. It's very sexy. <laughs> Thank you. So what was your inspiration behind this song? When I saw the video, I said, oh. You know what? It, Were you it in a sexy mood and said, you know, may I go put this one on? Yes, it was more like that. We just went in. Um, the video guy, he basically just came in. Kipper and I, we just went in. There was no plan. Mm -hmm. We just said so we're going to do our thing. We're just going to make it look sexy, hot. And we're just listening to music and just rocking So how did it. the collaboration come together between you and Kipperich? Okay, so first of all, I was introduced to Richie Stevens, and that's who I'm working with right now by his niece, uh, Alicia. Alicia and I have attended the same school. We became friends over the period of time. When I, she recognized that I was modeling at that time, that time I possibly owned like four crowns already. And she basically came up to me and she said, you know, I heard you sing, my uncle can bust you, you know. And I looked at her like, what's she talking about? And she just popped his number and said, call him up. And I looked at her and I thought, I was like, oh my God, you know, how am I just gonna call Richie out of the blue? Mm -hmm. And I just have guts one day and just get up and just, I never told anyone to have his number. I just had it as a secret, and then I just called him up and he said he was in the studio, he was gonna call me back, never heard him. However, um, apparently I used to model for Styles International in Toronto, so I post a picture of one of my modeling picture on my Facebook. Richie actually saw it and he commented on a need asking me to do a music video for him. Then I inbox him and say, hey, do you remember who I am? And then he say, oh, that's you. And he's like, oh my God. And then we just back with the connection again. And he said, he came to Canada. He said, Kimmy, when are you coming over to do music? I said, okay, I'll let you know. And he said, come to Europe with me. Come, come, come on tour with me. And I was like, same time I have a sad situation. My aunt passed away, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I couldn't make it. And then he said, when are you coming to Jamaica? I don't think you're serious. But I didn't want to really explain my whole issues to him. So I said, okay, I'm gonna come, book a flight. I was there, I was at his house, everything, and with his family, and I just do music. And then after the song, actually when I went, it was a collaboration I was supposed to have with um, an artist, well-known artist in Jamaica, mm -hmm. that I got hooked up because my neighbor actually is a very tight friend of him. So you have links all over? Um, I didn't know he have links. I just speak <laughs> to him and he say, hey, I know this artist, it's my, it's my friend. And I said, really? And I said, I basically just record on my phone, send it to him and he said, yeah. He, he said, where are you? When are you coming in? And he keep bugging me to come in. And I said, okay, I, I must go and do some music. Right. And then after I went down and after I completed that, um, I did the beats first, which is, the beats was made by uh, Kirkle Dove, mm -hmm. which is Bears Hammond drummer. Mm -hmm. right. And after Kirkle completed the beats, I listened, and he, he walked out of the studio, he said to me and Richie, I gave her a Grammy beats. 
And I looked at him, I didn't hear the beats yet. And I listened and I said, wow, sounds good. Mm. And now it's like, okay, Camille, go put on a song on it. And that was hard. So, you know, Richie started writing and he said, okay, Camille, I'm gonna start writing. And then after the whole music came along, then we just sat down and I decided, and I said, I'm not gonna basically do the collaboration with this person that I came to do, mm -hmm. do the collaboration anymore. So I said, Richie, find me somebody. And he looked at me, he said, what about the guy that you have, the artist? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I don't think that's gonna work. And he looked at me and he said, you sure? I said, yeah. I said, go ahead, find me somebody. And he said, let me sleep and wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then he woke Let me up. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, he woke up and he said, he came upstairs and he came in, Camille, I get exactly who I want to be on this track. And I said, who? He said, Kiprich. I said, wow, that's not like a perfect match. Mm -hmm. And once he, I remember the evening when he came in, it was the next evening and I saw all these entourage guys roll up and I said, okay, yes. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> The entourage, you know, it's seriousness. <laughs> yeah. So I knew he was in the studio. I was upstairs. I just let him do his stuff. Then Richard said, come down in the studio. Listen to this. And I was like, that's exactly what I want my song to sound like. Oh, okay. That nice. was like the perfect match for me. Right. Yeah. Well, I saw the video was recorded here in Toronto. Yes. Where was, was the song recorded here in Toronto? The song well? was recorded actually um, in Kingston in um, Pot of Gold, Richard Stevens. Um, so do you studio. find recording is better here locally in Toronto or in Jamaica? Which gives you a better vibe? You know, to be honest, starting off, I have no knowledge of music as in the beats or anything in the background. I just know I can write song and I will sing it. Right. That's it. Saying singing to a beats for me was hard. Mm -hmm. And Richie started from scratch with me. He said, come on, Camille, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And I go down and I remember to sign in the studio mm -hmm. and in no time, I have a song on a beat. Pot of gold. Big up pot of gold. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, we're not going to keep the, the, the viewers in suspense anymore. Yes. I want you to go ahead and introduce this video for them. Let we do the, the G View world premiere on it. Okay, so this is my first single. It's called Me Like It. Caramel featuring Kiprich. There you go. Here's an exclusive G. View World Premiere on GViewTV.com. See if something like it. I love when you're so Let me shake on my body, feel good. I be your nice, me and the king of the house, and I wake up and hold me about what. Something like it, something like it, something like it. See if something like it. Yeah, so she like it, did this sound right? Me, I'm the pleasure provider. Rough you up a bit, the back I ever fit Me no work off a timer Me love me when you call out me Me a man a brace and a put it on me Nobody sleep, just work all night Cause you know what some still want it Be a bit, don't keep me waiting Them things get too frustrating Like it. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's increased. Yeah, me like, me like it increased, but it. Yeah, mm, it's it, got a nice little vibe to it, and the fact that it's shot locally here in Toronto, you know, the, the cinematography is really great. Yes. You see, the face, what she talked about mm -hmm. earlier, the face and the, the, the tone of the music shocked me too. <laughs> Frightened because me not, me not, me not. You weren't expecting? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I kind of shocked. But you like it. Me like it. All right. Me like it. You know, any any shows in the upcoming future? Um, currently, in the next two weeks, I'm heading off to Jamaica. And, um, well, Richie, he told me I have a couple live performances to do. He didn't tell me where, but I'm going to do a couple shows, um, performances in Jamaica then promotion also in Jamaica and then I'm back in Toronto um, on the 24th I'll be performing with Richie should be a secret promotion <laughs> wise you know how they do it in Jamaica yes grandma would have said every pan knock yeah for the day you 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 ready for that sleepless night oh definitely he already told me come prepared <laughs> uh, it's not like over here where you where you do promotional things so you kind of reach there 10 o'clock and everything kind of close off at 3.30. No. In Jamaica, it's <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning. So I, I was there like a couple months ago. 
Yeah. So you're really afraid. Um, albums? Albums hopefully should be out, I would say, less than a year or a year. Less about, than a year. Yeah. And how the, 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 the viewers could get a copy of this song now? How? It's on YouTube. And um, you look for it by Caramel featuring Kip Rich, more like it. It can be on my Instagram page, which is um, official underscore Caramel Wilson. And it can be on my Facebook page, which is Camille Wilson, bracket Caramel. And they could find Caramel all over. All over. You, uh, iTunes is coming soon. iTunes is yes. coming soon. Um, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of artists is doing the... The, the free album now on iTunes, is that something you're considering? Are you, gonna, you have to drop it for your price. I'll think about it in the future. <laughs> you think about it in the future. Yes. Um, you know, um, a lot of people are, are bashing and, and, and saying, you know, this digital world mm -hmm. is not fair, you know. They don't like it. Yeah. How is it that you survive in this digital world as an artist? You know, it depends what viewers or it, def it depends what people want to see. Mm -hmm. Some people go out to look for music. Some people just wait for, you know, some people survive by WhatsApp, mm -hmm. um, Instagram. You find some people using Facebook more. I'm a big Facebook user. Yeah. All right. So it depends on what people like to use. But that's what that's the reason why I go with different mm -hmm. media sites as in using and hopefully in the near future i should be having more sites so that people can find me easier more access all right carmel big of yourself thank you for passing through on gvu TV. thank you very much you know the the video is 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 doing good you know what about, what about uh, me like it, me like it. <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's all me